Hey everybody, uh, Drew Brunelette here, Director of Student Ministries here at Cobb Prairie. I hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas. I hope you've gotten the gifts that you've wanted. I hope you got to spend plenty of time with family, and I hope you got to enjoy all of the food that you got to eat. Now, another holiday that just passed is New Year's Eve. I got a question for you. What's your New Year's resolution? Now I ask this, but I'm gonna be honest, I really haven't thought about mine yet. But I'll get there. I'll find one eventually. But here's my other question. What was your New Year's resolution for last year? How did it go? Did you complete it? Did you get it done? Or was it sidetracked? Did you get off course and completely forget about it? I feel like that's the story with most New Year's resolutions. We just get sidetracked and we, we forget about them. But that's a good thing, though. Sometimes they do. They get sidetracked, just like our goals. Now, here's a quick question for you. I know New Year's resolutions are, you know, you come around once a year. And so that's all you think about them. But there's something that's very, very similar to them. That's goals. Do you set goals for your life? Things you wanna be, where you wanna be in five years, what you wanna do now, what you wanna do next week? What are some of your goals? How about getting your grades up, even learning a new skill, getting into the college of your dreams, the one that you've wanted to go to your whole life, or finding a job, being healthier, or even just making a TikTok that's gonna be famous. Now here's the thing, there are big goals and there are small goals. Small goals could be things of getting your grades up. That's something that you could do just by working a little harder. But then there's big goals like you know, trying to get a TikTok famous. That's gonna take you places, that's gonna get you farther. Today, we're gonna focus though on those big goals. Those things that are gonna get us to further. We're gonna talk about how sometimes difficulties can inspire a God-sized goal. You may ask what a God-sized goal is, but it's this. It's a goal that is so big that we need God's help to complete it. Now today we're gonna to look at a guy in our Bible um, who, who did this exact thing. He saw something he took a difficulty and he changed it into a God-sized goal. So before we jump into the story, let's give a little backstory. First off, we're gonna be in the Old Testament. Um, this is the time and the stuff written before Jesus came, um, when it's about the Jewish people more than anybody. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be looking at the book with the, uh, called Nehemiah. It was written by the shortest man in the Bible. His name was Nehemiah, get it? It's a joke. I don't know if he's actually the shortest, but his name is Nehemiah. It is written 140 years before Jesus, um, and all the Jews are in exile at this point. And this is hard, but through prophets in this time, the Jews had hope, because prophets said that Israel and the Jewish people would be restored because God promised it. Now another thing before we get jumped in our story, a question for you. Imagine what it would be like to be kicked out of your home, your city, your town. I'm sure it would be tough, it'd be hard. Even just moving to a new town is hard. I couldn't imagine having someone come and take over. Um, it'd be like, I don't know, some foreign foreign country coming in and taking over the United States would be tough. It'd be hard to see. You'd probably lose friends. And if you survived and stayed there, you'd have to learn an all new culture, new languages, new skills, new way to do things, probably everything. In my mind, that'd be super tough. So today we're going to be looking at Nehemiah 1, 1, 1, chapters 1 and 2, through chapters 1 ver, through verses 2, verse 5. 
Now, in this, it talks about Nehemiah. It talks about he is sitting there one day, and his cousin comes to him, and he asks his cousin, because his cousin had moved back into into Jerusalem. He didn't leave. He he wasn't. Nehemiah was somewhere in exile, um, but he came to visit Nehemiah. And so when he came, Nehemiah said, "Hey, how how's it going there? What what's going on? Like, how are the people doing?" And his cousin said, "They're not doing well. It's not good." Um, and after that, Nehemiah goes and he offers this prayer, this prayer of asking God, hey, hey, God, give me wisdom, give me guidance. What can I do to help? Help me rebuild the city that you have made, the city that you have promised us, the temple, the walls, everything, so that one day we can restore the kingdom like you have promised. Now, here's the thing with Nehemiah. At that point in time, he was the cupbearer of the king of Persia, which, you know, he works for the king. It's kind of hard for him to get back to the city to actually be able to help out. But he's the cupbearer, and he made he, he was he was the king's friend. And so one day the king saw him, and he was sad. And he, the king goes, "Hey, why are you sad?" And Nehemiah decided to be have courage this day, and he said, "Because my home is destroyed." The king, having cared for Nehemiah, asked him, what can I do to help? Nehemiah, before saying this, because he's worried, think about it. This is the country, the king of the country who destroyed the city, the king of his people, who kicked him out of their home. He's living in exile. Nehemiah said a prayer, and he said, I want to go back and help. Send me home so I can help rebuild the walls of the city. The king did. He said yes. He sent him out. Sent him to the city. Now, here's a few things. First off, Nehemiah had a big goal. His big goal was to rebuild the walls of the city. To help rebuild what God had promised would be rebuilt. Now, the meaning behind this is bigger than we can think. It's not just building walls. First off, it's rebuilding walls because if you have walls around your city, it helps protect you from invaders from the outside. It keeps your people safer. Secondly, rebuilding these walls, these specific walls, was honoring God. And if they kept them down, it would be sinning against God. Because this is something God promised what was going to happen. He said my city would be rebuilt and your people would be back where they belong. And Nehemiah had this big goal to get there. Now here's the thing. When Nehemiah came up with this big goal, it was crazy. I'm sure everybody thought that. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to say. But here's what made things different for Nehemiah. First off, his goal began with difficulty. It wasn't easy, but he wasn't afraid. He saw the challenge and saw the way that he could help because of a difficult situation. Secondly, his goal began with prayer. When his cousin came to talk to Nehemiah, he said, hey, this is bad. And instead of Nehemiah directly going to the king right away, right after his cousin told him that, Nehemiah went to prayer. He went to talk to God to see if he could find a way to help and ask for God's help. And lastly, Nehemiah's goal began with God's help. He knew he wasn't alone. He knew that God had promised something. And he knew that if it was the right thing in the right time for what God wanted for the people, God would help. And he did. Now here's the thing. We all may not have a city where we can go rebuild the walls. But I'm sure at some point in our life, there's big difficulties. We look around us in our world and there are big difficulties. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's happening a lot of times. But here's the thing. When we see these big difficulties, we go in and we're not afraid of this big difficulty. We go in with prayer and we go in with God's help. This big difficulty can inspire a God's eyes goal. So as you go into this new year, and as you go into even this week, keep your eyes open. Look 
for ways to come up with a God-sized goal so that you can step forward into your future and step forward into our future in prayer and with God. I hope you all have an amazing week. I hope you enjoyed your New Year's. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas. Um, I am praying for each and every single one of you. God bless.